It's True Vault Escapades! Yes, it's another case for Detectives Walter and Bunny in the post-nuclear world. Today, The Curse of the Casket, Part 2. After recently surviving an assassination attempt by a man claiming to work for Casket, Walter and Bunny narrowly escape from the town of Gold Point, where the devious slaver's robot Fitzgerald attacked the settlement with a mini-nuke. Despite Casket's supposed death, our heroes and the NCR believe that this strange retaliation may be bigger than they think. Only two seconds into this place, and I already don't like it. You and me both, girl. This is the kind of place a man runs to when he's been exiled from society. Decent society. This place is like a bowl. Just one little spot in the desert surrounded by a circular collection of cliffs. Someone is definitely hiding here. We're sitting ducks out here. Keep a lookout for anywhere he can hide, like large rocks or dunes. Uh, we're pretty much in plain sight down here, Walter. Chances are this guy is hiding out in the cliffs somewhere. Put that fancy scope to use. There's bound to be some kind of shady nook for this guy. Ah, small cave mouth. Just a few clicks ahead of us. Seems to be the only one in this whole joint. Then that's where we're headed. Goodness knows where this guy gets his food, tucked all the way out here. I love the Shroud of the Sandstorm, though. Nice touch. <gasps> Duck and run, Bunny. We've been spotted. The cave mouth. If we don't make it there right now, we're done. <sighs> that was close. Way too close. Moving through this cave is the only possible way to get to him. The cave's not that big, but it only seems to be going up. That's for sure leading up to the eagle's nest he's got at the top of the cliffs. That really means there's only one passageway up. One way in, one way out. Which means this will be a high-stakes game of cat and mouse. I think that's what we know best. <gasps> Behind those boulders, quickly! Walter! Bunny! Your agility precedes you. Perhaps the stories are true. Who the heck are you, and what's your relation with Casket? <laughs> You're the investigators here. Telling you would be defeating the purpose. Give it up, mercenary. If only your aim worked as good as your mouth, you wouldn't have let us get this close. <laughs> Looks like I'm not the only one with a slick tongue here. And don't fool yourself about being speedsters or anything. Sometimes I like to watch my prey squirm before they die. So quit hiding behind those rocks and delaying the inevitable. Next time he fires a round, pop behind your cover and give him one back. Gotcha. Don't be so inconsiderate, you both. You know we can't just have you wandering about, taking over our plans like a damn sandcastle. Oh yeah? And who's we? What's the matter? If you're so sure you'll kill us, I don't think you'd be so afraid to hold back. And give your souls the satisfaction? No. I want you wandering this way so scrambled that you'll never find the rest. Now! Ah! We caught his leg. Hurry, get after him, but keep low. Uh, 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 so you got lucky, huh? <laughs> uh, Should have figured. Only rats like you benefit from dirty moves. Tell us what you creeps are up to, 
and I promise I won't aim for the other leg. Uh, oh! Uh, I see why the boss lied to you. You're a spunky little brat, aren't you? Mm. Oh, we just missed him. He crawled through that hole. Give me a boost up. We can't let him get away. Look around and make sure it's clear first. If he's sticking around, we're the vulnerable ones. I know that. Show yourself, you coward! The sandstorm's a lot heavier up here. He's using it as a shroud to run. I don't know how long he expects to go with a hole the size of a freaking golf ball in his leg. You didn't leave the keys with the jeep now, did you? No. Why would I do that? No, uh, I, I don't mean it like that. Then what the hell do you mean? Look, I just don't want him to have an easy getaway. Uh, yeah, me neither. Yeah, but... You remember what happened with the car when that nutty Institute scientist- Oh, pish posh. That was a completely separate situation. And we don't even know if the Institute is real or not. That was just some lunatic- Yes. And that lunatic, who probably never drove a car before, came at us going 120 miles per hour. He nearly totaled that thing. So clearly humanity hasn't evolved far enough to forget the concept of driving a car. Oh, yeah? In that case, you would have been smarter to mention that, I don't know, sometime when we were out of the vault? Well, I... <clears throat> you read books. I'm sorry if I thought we'd be on the same page about that stuff. <sighs> yeah, 200-year-old books. The point of that conversion is to update. I can tell you about Shakespeare, you can tell me about bloodthirsty super mutants. Well, I'm sure there was a popular auto parts magazine or two down in that vault. That stuff's from before our generation, not after our... Oh. Walter? Hey, get off my man! Bunny, hit him harder. I can't get a grip on him. I said, get off my man! Wait! Stop! Uh, oh, that hurts! Bunny! Bunny! Stop! Stop! You got him! You got him! <laughs> Looks like you beat him up with that gun of yours pretty good. But it doesn't look fatal. You hurt? Nah, only him. I think he'll live, though. Let me search him, and then we can hog time for the jeep. <sighs> Okay. All right. Let's see here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. What is that, Walter? Uh, looky here. Does that look familiar? Huh? Wait. That's the same device from before. The other sniper. Exactly. A black device with a letter and number on it. What's the catch here with all this? A kind of tracker? An ID advice? Regardless, we have another piece of the puzzle. And an incapacitated sniper here. If we can't extract anything from the device, we can get it from him. <sighs> He's breathing. I'll double check him for hidden weapons and then you can carry him. My biceps are already killing me. <laughs> I bet they are. Seems like our little buddy is waking up from his physically induced coma. Uh, uh, what, what, where, where am I? Oh, wait, wait. What the heck am I doing alive? Oh, and here you had me thinking that I escaped to the sweet silence of the void. Huh. Trust me when I say that's not where you're going. 
Nope. Where you're going, you'll get a warm rag and a cushy seat in one of Camp Macaron's finest interrogation rooms. Yeah, so just sit tight and enjoy the ride. Though I don't think you can do that. Our last car was smooth as silk. But you'll have to bear this rocky jalopy for a little while, won't you? <coughs> <coughs> Oh, and what do you expect me to say, huh? I'm just fulfilling a contract that I know very little, love. The boss is much smarter than to let me in on that. Yeah, because you guys suck and get captured all the time. A good observation, Bunny. Uh, uh, I'm telling you. Tie me up and beat me all you want. The only thing I can give you is that you made a very angry man out of casket. Oh. Here I thought I saw the worst of him a decade ago. You poked a kind of hornet's nest that won't stop until you're all stung. Casket's dead, Bozo. I am sick and tired of all this talk in the context you're putting that filthy mongrel in. You guys clearly have a kind of coordinated retaliation scheme against us, and we're getting closer by the minute. <sighs> and what is dead, huh? If Casket were dead, Everything that he's continuing to put you through wouldn't be happening now, would it? Death <laughs> is a frame of mind. Don't get all philosophical on us now. Yeah, well, I've seen enough and spent enough time alone to understand these things. I'm sure you two worms would understand stepping on Casket is like stepping on a pregnant spider. His legacy, his life force, it carries on. <laughs> and so what? You're one of his babies now? Don't make me laugh. You don't- Oh, I know. I know one thing. I know that even after death, you willingly choose to serve perhaps the worst criminal in what remains of humanity. You have no clue what the hell he put me through in just a short time and so many others after me. Have you seen the lengths he can go to secure another human being he deems viable? Have you? Just yesterday, we witnessed the destruction of an entire town we helped to save from that piece of scum mere months ago. And all for what? Revenge? And you have the audacity to be upset at us? I should skin you alive and lock you in a barrel of lemon juice, you freak! Casket's laughable legacy ends tonight. We started with your little friends in the mountains, and we're about to end it with you. Well said, Bunny. <laughs> oh, yeah? I still don't care what he's done. Or is about to do. You've done enough to me already. And I'm not about to give you bastards the satisfaction of humiliating me in front of the NCR. <clears throat> Bunny, he's trying to roll off the car. No. <sighs> Wait! Oh, no, you don't! <clears throat> Stop the car! Stop the car! He rolled out! Darn it! Hold on. <sighs> He's dead. Isn't he? Yep. He's dead. Rats! And essentially, that's what happened. You detectives feed off information. I know it's your nature to feel a void when you lose your source, but pat yourselves on the back for being spared this day. The idiot was smug, and confident of himself. Even in death, I don't like his assuredness. You and me both, Bunny. You and me both. So, you guys say you got yourself some loot? Yes, and yet another odd little device you can just about fit in your pocket. Resembles something of a handheld radio. Right. At first I thought it was a digital clock of some kind. That's clearly not the case. Two bright red characters on the screen. J and 1. Almost identical to the last one. Let me see it. 
No doubt I could pull something from it. Here you go. You... you pull anything off of it? Are you okay, Norman? What's the sit rep, Norman? You don't have a face, but I can feel the despair on you. I don't know how to really explain it, but there's really only one way to do so. Go on. We can take it. No, you can't. Ladies and gentlemen, what I hold in my hand right here is one piece of a very rare code. A code that if each matching character is used all at once, an immeasurable amount of damage can occur. What I hold is a nuclear code. What? No way. Uh, I... Hold on a second. N nukes I'm afraid so. But wait. Wait! No way. I... I mean, I wouldn't put it past the monster, but... What's the end game for all this madness? That idiot wouldn't dare. The Mojave is the only gold mine he knows. Without it, he has nothing. Correction for the both of you. The late casket very much has an end game for this wasteland. And he only has access to the nukes likely used for testing in the pre-war era. Then he would be aiming for the important landmarks around Vegas. No way he would try the city itself. Everyone knows about House's anti-air defense. Then he would be coming for the NCR. This place included. But why? Why all this personal palaver over the sake of his business? Listen, you three. Delving into the motives of Casket isn't going to reward us with anything but wasted time. What we need to focus on are the solid facts. For some reason, he's posthumously activated these assassins to simultaneously hold these codes and attempt to kill you. Look, I'm no detective like you both, but I assess that Casket's plan was to bump you off so investigations like these wouldn't happen. With that, we have the upper hand. Next, it's clear that this bizarre plan to use a test nuke is meant as retaliation for the NCR's efforts to suppress him. And this code? This is literally all for some drive-by? Precisely. And you said this is for the old Nevada test nukes? How many are we talking here? So far, we only have part of a combination code for one. One code equals one nuke. In fact, I would be surprised if he had enough for more than one. Obtaining these codes is no easy task. Mm. Well, one nuke, even a test nuke, is enough to decimate a major NCR base of operations. I've seen the old films. And aren't the testing grounds riddled with mines? No sense in sending a troop there to deal with whatever's left out there. No, the risk would be too great. In fact, Casket's men can easily use the code to unlock the nuke for themselves to use mobilely. The possibilities are endless for what capacity that bomb will be used for. <sighs> okay. So, what can we do now? Even anything small to put this to bed is something I'd be happy to do. Already got to work on that the moment I found out the meaning behind these codes. Walter, Bunny, I luckily have a new place close by where you can get your hands on another one of them. Remember, as long as we have the codes in our hands here, there's no way Casket's people can secure that bomb. Lieutenant, I think you can handle a uh, <clears throat> calm way to assemble the brass for potential attacks, yes? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm getting our best snipers and radar experts ready the moment I leave this room. Detectives, just make sure you secure the rest of those codes to further bury that dead psycho's plans further into the ground, eh? Oh, you bet, Humphreys. When it comes to deadbeats, we wish we could kill twice. This man is at the top of our list. Norman, just point us to the right direction, and make sure we have a guy we get to shoot at will this time. Okay. Obtaining this next code is going to be a little more complicated this time, but if executed right, should be rather smooth. Listen closely. Well, I hope you believe in spiritual repercussions. I don't think there's a place low enough for Old Casket after what he's done. 
and is preparing to do. I'll let you know if I can book an appointment with that medium in Freeside. Uh, say, how come the next code is being delivered by a courier and not bouncing around in some assassin's pocket this time? Probably because it's on its way to be delivered as we speak. This poor courier probably has no clue what he's about to deliver. Then again, it's not their place to ask questions. These goons are definitely the most skilled I've seen in a long time. Now that one isn't expecting us, we'll have a better chance of getting the jump on them. And this time, we'll be sure to break his hands before he can do anything slick like last time. Now all we need to do is stake out and wait for the exchange. I still don't understand the Fitzgerald thing. Well, he's Casket's biggest asset, Bunny. How the heck he managed to get him back and working again is beyond me, though. Hidden agents, sleepers, or something. Casket was a big planner. No doubt he had more than one robot to reassemble his favorite one. You're still not feeling guilty, are you? Huh? Oh, no. Thanks for checking, though. This time I plan on making sure Casket's dead. If that means what's burning what's left of him, and burning the ashes, I'll do it. With cameras at every angle. <laughs> Wait, here comes the courier. Ah, yes. And there's... Fitz! What? The assassin getting the code this time is a giant freaking robot? Forget the ambush for a moment. Let's just see what happens, and get a hold of the courier later for questioning. Right. Let's watch what they do and wait for them to separate. We need to see what this bucket of bolts wants. Can you hear them? Not really. Sounds like a Money Matters combo anyway. We need to keep an eye on what the courier pulls from his bag. Look, he's taking it out. What could it be? Can't be all that big. From that little pouch. Look! There it is! What is that? Is that what I think it is? Let's keep a mental note. Small box, red lights glowing from inside the package. That's definitely our code. Got it. There they go. They're separating. Let's let them get some distance from each other. We don't even want to risk the chance of being picked up by Fitzgerald. Right. Okay. Hey, you! Can we bother you for a moment? <gasps> He's making a break for it! After him! <sighs> Leave me alone! In the name of New Vegas, stop right now. <laughs> Hold it right there. Help! Help! Be quiet, will you? Why? You, you crazies want to kill me! We don't want to kill you, all right? We just wanted to ask you questions, but you ran. Ramen crap! You two armed weirdos in the middle of the desert stalking me? What do you want, huh? Money? My, my supply? My leg? I'll assure you, I'm dry and I'm stringy. Don't be so dramatic. Get up. Get up. <sighs> okay. I I'm up. Now, what do you want? Look, it's a long story, but all we want are some answers from you. That's right. We're detectives from the city, on the behalf of the NCR and Mr. House. Oh. Okay, well, I'm here. You got me. If you thought there was a drug deal back there, I'm a courier, not a pusher. And last I checked, chems aren't illegal. We know that. It's about what you gave him. H him as in the robot. Let's start with who you work for. Can you do that? Uh, yeah. 
I'm with the Mojave Express, like any normal courier in this place. Look, I'm sorry if I look suspicious and all that, but I'm one of the bucks that takes the night jobs. Is it more dangerous? Yeah, but it pays a hell of a lot better than the general stuff. All right, thanks. That's a great thing to know. Now, on to the meat and potatoes. The package. What was it? I... I... I don't know. Buddy, if you know anything, anything at all, it would be in your best interest to tell us. It could be the matter of life and death for people you've never met in your entire life. No, I'm, I'm telling you. Us couriers never get a glimpse, not even a clue about what we're dropping off. Yeah? <sighs> Look... I'd have told you already if I had any idea. Was it bizarre that my first client of the night was a sentry bot? Sure, but, I mean, I've seen Otter. You're positive. Look, lady, if it's a trade secret you want from me, we delivery boys could care less about what we drop off. As long as it means we're paid, safe, and have a roof over our heads for the night, the rest of the world could burn for all we care. <sighs> okay. Just needed to check you out. Hey, no hard feelings. Heck, if you even need me to testify of some crap at NCR headquarters, I'll do it. As long as I can keep my job. That's fine, that's fine. If the NCR still wants you, we'll reach out. And don't worry, we know your boss over in Prim. You'll be okay. <sighs> Thanks, you two. Now what? Unless you have a new whiz way of fiddling with that robot's combat inhibitor again... The least we can do is track it down to Casket's new hideout. That's right! Maybe if we can catch up and ping it to Humphreys, they could coverage the whole area if push comes to shove. Hey, wait, wait, maybe I could help. That robot was a creepy fella, but he did mention he was... It's Fitzgerald. He must have heard us. Eliminating hostiles. Walter Cavalry Detective. Bunny, runaway slave. Run, Bunny. We have to get out of here. <laughs> Status. Package received. Courier eliminated. Remaining targets out of range. Resuming directive. After this. Have you ever wondered how deep the Elder Scrolls lore rabbit hole goes? Have you got a grasp of the basics and want to find out more about the universe? Reason in Uncertainty is here to help you. We'll be mixing in philosophy, theology, and whatever other theory is useful with Elder Scrolls texts to untangle some of the biggest questions in the series, like what are Dragon Breaks? How does Chim work? Where did the Dwemer go? And more. Check us out at writteninuncertainty.com or find Written in Uncertainty on any podcatcher. Thanks for listening and catch you later in the grey maybe of Tamriel. Say, have you fellas ever wondered why True Vault Escapades hasn't been made into a radio mod for any of the Fallout games yet? Well, guess what? It is! That's right. With the partnership of our show's creator, Preston Harden, and developer, Epicist Gamer, you can now enjoy over 38 hours of True Vault Escapades right from your in-game Pip-Boy in Fallout 4 on NexusMods.com. We're so excited to finally share this expansion with Fallout fans across the world and enhance your experience in the post-war Boston Commonwealth. Remember, we're on NexusMods.com. Be sure to leave an endorsement and share the adventures with your friends.
without the following Patreon members, we couldn't be where we are today. Say, why don't we raise a toast to the following supporters this month who decided to join the Dear Listener tier, shall we? Two, Joel Jackal, Nick Bailey, Joseph Torsivia, Tim Roth, Mike Tyson, The Donnie Difference, Don McCormack, Lost Paws Jr., Brandon Cullison, Jorge, Maximilian Trox, Austin Rogers, Alex Roberts, Hodgepodge the Cardboard Wolf, Jackson Little, Shannon Dale White, Kylar Skulkin, Pamela Schmeckpepper, Skygon, Van Hoffenheimer, Joseph Washer, Dean Calaboy, JPM, Joshua Riley, Taylor O'Connor, Desmond Irons, Undercover Squirrel, and Jordan Dickey. We thank you to the moon and back for your continued support. Doesn't get cooler than those guys, I tell ya. Wanna join the fold? Visit patreon.com slash abomradio. That's patreon.com slash abomradio. And now, back to our story. So it looks as if Norman's intelligence was right. He indeed did track down another assassin. But this time the most bolstered and armed to the teeth one belonging to Casket's fold. It is unfortunate to hear what happened to that innocent courier. But the least we could take away from this is both of you are still intact. Are you sure he was handed a code? It definitely was. Perhaps it was the most important? We hadn't seen Fitzgerald since the destruction of Gold Point. Nor did I expect him to handle the menial side of things like this. Each code is just as important as the next. This was perhaps another failsafe for the plan. A few assassins and a destructive robot to ensure at least one piece of the puzzle. So what does this mean, Norman? Despite one, we have the majority of the codes now. That's right. I'm assuming we can sigh a breath of relief knowing this WMD plot just got the e-brake pulled on it. Even better. In our combined efforts and bravery from you both, I've managed to siphon through thousands of pre-war records regarding the Nevada testing site. And after hacking each available system, I ran a diagnostic. If anything, we determined here was right. There is only one outpost in the region that still has the capability to access what remains of the test bombs. What? Really? Norman, that's incredible. They sure weren't playing around when they sent you from California. So, do we destroy it, or do something a little more complicated? This is news to me. Heck, I can send a squad and make sure that place is blown to cinders before dinner time. No. This should be the last quest to burden our detectives with. Sending anything as noticeable as a squadron there would pose a risk. Here's the thing. I could be wrong here. But this is the closest imaginable place Casket's men could have input these codes. Destruction would be a risky endeavor, and quite possibly trigger any remaining nukes in the area. No. What we need to do is activate the codes we have there, and I'll run a series of patterns to quite hopefully unlock the controls for a manual shutdown. Wait, I'm lost. Isn't the point to keep the code as far away from the facility as possible? No, Bunny. Simply put, the control panel of the outpost will remain powered down unless all the key cards are slotted in correctly. From there, you can either decide to launch a nuke, unlock one, or permanently shut the facility down. We'll obviously be going for the latter. The thing won't blow us up inside if we guess the last code wrong too many times, right? <laughs> Heavens no. On that note, there is undoubtedly a security system in place for too many incorrect attempts. So I'll provide you with my top two most probable combinations. If that doesn't work, we'll assess this another way. I have no doubt one of them will work, though. Well, it looks like the door has opened and there's light at the end of this tunnel, folks. You both have been through a lot just to put a stop to this evil plan. And I favor once you knock this nuclear thing out, we can finally put this casket nightmare to bed. I couldn't have said it better myself. Let's get this done, people. I don't like open-ended cases, and if we can bury the casket problem once and for all, I'll be able to get some of the best shut-eye of my life. I'll be waiting for you both on the intercom. Stay safe in the home stretch. Keep your heads up, fellas. We're almost done here.
My, my. Straight out of the postcards. This place. One cliff overlooking the massive Nevada testing grounds. Look at all those metal pillars out there. One of them definitely holds our test nuke. Yeah. Let's get inside and put a rest to this thing. You alright, Bon? Yeah. Just that casket really had a plan after all this mess. I guess I just want to shut this down as soon as possible. And figure out what else the heck he had cooking. We'll cut those burgers off. One at a time. Come on, let's head inside. Look at this place. The rust is practically flaking off the walls here. Is Norman even sure this place is still operational? A body can still live with severe burns now, can't it? <gasps> Norman, I had forgotten you were able to control the intercom here. Apologies for the scare. I'm glad you both have made it there safely. I've spent the time you took to get there to monitor the area for energy readings, but nothing yet. Do you still have the code in one piece? All right here and ready for your analysis. We want to be careful with this, so be sure you've exhausted your probability before we punch them in. Yeah, and by what I can see here, this facility is far beyond what I've studied up on. You'll have to guide us verbatim from here. That won't be a problem. Do you see that massive monitor practically serving as a centerpiece in the room? Right below it should be a complicated set of controls. Don't worry about those. What you should be looking for are those bulky slots at the lowest points of the panel. Okay. Do you see it? Y yeah. A bulky set of slots meant for the codes we caught. Good. Then in the exact order we captured them, you should place them... <gasps> Walter! What? The first slot. It's got the missing code in it. The one that Fitzgerald took. Wh what? It's right there. Already placed where it's supposed to be. Norman, what's your take here? Son of a gun. I've been suspecting this. What? I'm afraid Fitzgerald has been anticipating a successful recapture of those codes. He's likely slotted in the first one ahead of hunting you both in retaliation. That means he's close. Oh my. So we should secure the rest while we can, right? Yes. It's the only way. Hurry. You must insert those codes and pull the lever to your right to secure what you choose where the nuke will be. Got it. Bunny, hold the door. We can't risk that bucket of bolts trying something last minute. Got it. Just secure that darn nuke. There. There. I've got it. <gasps> What's happening? Walter, it says the nuke is being unlocked. Wh what the hell? I'll see if I can stop it. <sighs> Norman, Norman, the alarm is going crazy. It's not doing what it's supposed to. Norman. <laughs> I'm not breaking through. <sighs> and who's that laughing? It's Norman. Huh? <laughs> But, Walter, it's doing exactly as it's supposed to. <laughs> What's gotten into you, Robo-Brain? I can assure you this is not terminating the systems. <laughs> Why, of course it isn't, Detective. Why would I want to do that? What's gotten into you, Norman? Did your subroutines get crossed with the Silver Shroud comic or something? Oh, even better, dear girl. Thanks to you, my plans to secure an uncompromised nuke have been fulfilled. And the most tickling feature of it all... <laughs> I couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> no way. Casket! What? No. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Casket is dead. Casket is dead. Casket is dead. Wrong on both accounts, girl. 
Within the past few months, I have been lurking directly in the face of the NCR, exposed to their most cherished secrets throughout history. Do you want to know the funny part? I could care less about what I've uncovered about the military and its corrupt officials back out west. I merely had one prerogative in mind, one last mission. Ironically, a mission I had you both so happily partake in. Why move against the grain when you can move with it? But I... but I don't understand. You were... you were crushed alive and swallowed by the earth. Even before this, I could just barely believe you had lived. I knew you had something to do with this from the very beginning. I couldn't put my finger on it then. Nor could I see you, but I could smell your infected soul from a mile away. Yes, and because of that, I intentionally had you both pursue my troop of deadly assassins, who were already on the way to the outpost you're standing in now. Had I left them alone without you to intervene, perhaps my plan could continue in silence. But we all know the saying about an idle mind. So you further blur the lines, and had us risk our lives for a code that was going to the same place, regardless of whether we got our hands on it or not. Well played, Casket. Well played. It... it makes so much sense now. As long as we never knew the truth, the codes were coming here no matter what. And in the process, we could have possibly died by one of your goons. It's... It's a win-win. Yes, and all the while distracting you both from potentially uncovering my guys. I had Fitzgerald insert that last code in for you. You both simply did the rest. I am honestly shocked he hadn't managed to kill you with that courier. You're quite lucky. You owe me this at least, you conniving scrap heap. How did you- Survive. Well, it's fantastical, but another scientific benchmark by my own genius. Had I lost my vital signs for over ten seconds, an automatic beacon implanted in my brain would have sent an emergency signal to Fitzgerald, who would then recover me in any way possible, which he did flawlessly. Though under the cold, rocky grave you gave me, my body was crushed beyond repair. My brain, however... No. How lucky am I to have sustained little to no cranial damage compared to everything else that was done to me in that explosion. After a risky yet successful brain recovery, my grey matter was installed into one of many ready-to-go tanks. <laughs> Norman. Dang it, I should have known. What? I can't believe this. But... But, but how did you get... Inside NCR lines. Education is key, dear bunny. You don't really think the plan was simply to save my life, do you? No, it was to keep the business going. This was for the business. And in this route... I was simply to replace an already existing entity of the NCR. If it makes you feel any better, Norman was a real robo-brain, but he was disposed of. Thus installing yourself in Norman's place, making it easy to request a transfer from California to the Mojave. Bingo! I even transferred his voice box and data into my brain before throwing him to a trash heap. I'll give this one to you, detectives. My plans to terminate you have failed rather miserably yet again. But I made sure to anticipate the unsuccessful attempts on your lives by both Fitzgerald and my snipers. Due to your roach-like resilience, this bogus quest to shut off the nuke was merely an opportunity to get you out of my way while I work. No. No way we just went through this whole wild goose chase to help you secure a nuke! (laughs) Oh, just take the compliment that you're effective opponents. Because let's face it, we just can't seem to put each other down. 
So, I'm going to handle who I can disintegrate, and you focus on who you can overpower. True to form, Casket. True to form. I guess if terrorizing and enslaving folks doesn't work out, nuking them will just have to suffice, eh? <laughs> oh, I'd love to catch up with you, Walter. I truly would. But, duty calls. <laughs> Hold on, Bunny. Hold on. I think someone else is coming over the radio. Fellas? Fellas! We're here, Humphreys. What's going on? We were just on the horn with... Casket? Yes. I suppose that makes sense now. Huh? Why? Because that behemoth robot of his just attacked Camp McCarran. What? What? It was awful. Just rolled up to the front doors and unleashed the most hellish amount of firepower on the guards and veteran rangers. How many are hurt? Multiple casualties in half, Boyo. We figured something was wrong when Norman was suddenly away from his post and the terminal started acting up. Of course, this was a casket plan after all. <sighs> anyway, we have a truckload dead and more injured than there are blood donors in the world. Listen, we'll take care of all that. But in the meantime, you guys need to catch Casket before he does something crazy with that nuke. He just spent a minute mocking us, Humphreys. Unless we find out where his base of operations is, what he does with that nuke is a mystery. Wait a minute. What? Casket said he was getting us away from McCarran to stop us from potentially finding him while he made his escape. <sighs> Why did he attack McCarran in the first place? To get rid of as many reinforcements as he could. Great Scott, he's gonna nuke Hoover Dam. What? Oh my gosh. It makes perfect sense. Distract the NCR and disrupt their backup all while hurtling that bomb at the dam. He's giving one giant screw you to this place. We need to hurry. Now. I'll rally everyone I can. Just hurry, you two. We need all the help we can to ready every defense we can over there. By George. Even if the monster doesn't destroy the entirety of the dam at first, he'll leave enough chaos for the Legion to pour in like termites. Hurry, I say. Hurry! I don't know, you guys. Casket's always a step ahead of us, and this could very well be yet another one of his tricks. Trust me, Humphreys. There's no other place in Mojave that Casket would rather see in shambles. Right. It's similar to the twisted mentality of your average controlling man. If I can't have you, no one can. To him, the Mojave's wronged him. So, he's going to destroy the one thing each faction is vying for. Ugh. Can you imagine the disarray that would cause? I have to admit, Bunny. Even I can wrap my head around that logic. It's ironic, really. He's the only one who compares to Caesar when it comes to human rights violations on a large scale. Yet he's mad at us. Oh, like I always say, he'll get his brain in a jar or not. What is it? Nothing major to report yet. However, we're aware of some suspicious movement coming from the old Nevada testing grounds. Okay. Looks like we might have a correct hypothesis here. It's him. It has to be him. So why can't we get troops out there on the testing grounds? Two reasons. High radiation, and a suspicious series of landmines that popped up there recently. <laughs> of course. Yeah, should have figured something was up before. Thing is, this psycho using a blasted nuke would have been the last thing I expected him to do. My fault again for underestimating him. Uh... Don't fret, Bunny. We'll get him. I hope. Hey, that reminds me. <gasps> what was that? I'm no scientist, but I think I saw a blast coming from way over there. No, he really did it. He just launched the test nuke. Great Scott. I can't believe it. 
This is it. Everyone's getting their guns and artillery ready. And you should too, detectives. They may not be much compared to the anti-aircraft missiles and 50 cal snipers, but every bit of lead against this thing counts. Oh, you don't have to worry about me. This purse gun is going to have a broken trigger by the time I'm through firing it. Same here. I hope you guys have some pretty reliable radar. We can't let that thing get even close to this place. Have faith in NCR reliability, Walter. We may have garbage strategics, but our technology is the best in the West. Mainly because it's pre-war. Oh, seems we've got a lock on something. Prepare yourself, everyone. Oh my... Oh my gosh. I see it. I think I see it. Right up there. Coming above us. Almost a perfect 90 degrees. Golly, that's a big bomb. We can't let it get any closer. Everyone! Open fire immediately! The further we blow it, the better! Now! Did it. <laughs> that did it. Huh. Well, would you look at that, Walter? I actually broke the trigger of my pistol. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that last bullet was the one that did it, Bunny. <laughs> and all that work for nothing. Gosh, I love it. Hope it was worth it, Casket. What? The alarms are going off again. Something else is coming in. No way. There's no way he was able to get his hands on another nuke. That's no nuke. What? <sighs> Talk to us! An incoming unidentified aerial craft. I think it's a vertebrate. Look! It's coming at us! Full speed! Do we shoot it down? No clue. And we can't tell if it's friendly or not. I think it's best to assume the worst. Huh? Why, Walter? I don't usually see Robo-Brains manning the side hatch turrets. That's him! Shoot him before he passes us up. Go on! Open fire, everyone! Your fire. There he goes. Yet again, there he goes. Don't beat yourself up over it, Bunny. We knew Casket was out of our reach once he revealed himself to us, but we foiled his sick plan once more. Try not to let it keep you up at night, dear friend. Now that his file is reopened again, he's now considered a full blown fugitive of the NCR, and will probably have the fattest bounty reward anywhere we hold territory. Thanks, Lieutenant. But is it enough? It'll be enough to push him into obscurity from the West, that's for sure. If he has the gall to take another swipe at you, he might as well sign his own death warrant. Eyes will be on him again. No one will forget the man who tried to nuke Hoover Dam. Heck, even Kaiser might have him on a hit list for that. <sighs> hey. Either by the hand of us or someone else, he'll get his. Right, Walter. He'll get his.
This has been another hair-raising mystery of True Vault Escapades. Tune in next time for our next episode. Today's story was written and produced by Preston Hardin, edited and mixed by Ethan Walsh. In The Curse of the Casket, Part 2, Walter Camry was voiced by Eric Huffman, Bunny by Crystal Romero, Humphreys, Norman, Casket, and Fitzgerald by Philip Sacramento, The Sniper by Josh Smith, The Courier by Roxanne Fleetwood, and The NCR Ranger by Vitriol Plays. Be sure to write and review this podcast from wherever you're listening. Also, consider joining our Patreon for exclusive behind-the-scenes content and custom stickers. You're encouraged to visit our social media, Discord server, and merchandise store by visiting the description below. You can also subscribe to Sir Spooks on YouTube for all the best paranormal content by following the link in this episode's description. Until next time, this has been True Vault Escapades. Listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.